Okay, so I'm going to foil some pieces for you. Um, one thing that I learned a long time ago, it's really hard for me sometimes to know what size of foil things are. There's some that are really, really close. And so what I did is, and this is backwards because my camera is um, reversing view, but on the inside core, I'll write the dimension of the foil that I'm working with. And that way I know exactly what this is as I work with it. Alrighty. So, foiling. Oops, sorry. My foil tape paper is all twisted around my foiler. There we go. Can you see okay? Okay. Try to, try to stay here where you can see. So when I'm foiling, like I say, I start in one place and work my way up. Almost lost my piece there. So this was the piece that I had forgot to do. It's semi-transparent. I can kind of see through it and I can't show it on the camera. You can kind of see through it. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and use the black back because when the sun is shining on it, it may or may not show the copper. It may glisten a little different. And this is what works for me. This is how I hold my pieces. So I'm holding it in the center. I use my ring finger to kind of stabilize it. And then as I'm going through, I start and I overlap it. I go around and I overlap it about oh, a quarter of an inch, about just a finger's worth. Cut it off. If I have any points, I'm going to start there and I'm going to miter them. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go on each side and just push that one side down and then overlap the other. Whenever you get those, when you're soldering, whenever you get those um, little bubbles that you just can't seem to get to fill in with solder, and it just, no matter what you do, you've got this little air bubble that keeps showing up. Most likely it's going to be on a corner where the foil has actually flipped over on you. And that solder is not going to stick to that no matter what you do. So if you have a little piece of that, that adhesive on your surface, you are not going to get solder to stick to that no matter what. Simple remedy. Just take your X-Acto knife or your fingernail and just take it and flip it back over and then crimp it down. Most of the time, like I said, when that's going to happen, it's going to happen on a corner point with your miters. Okay, the next thing I do, I take my roller and normally I'm doing this over on the table instead of on top of my work surface here, so I'm going to hold it instead. But roll around the edge. You want to get that nice and secured onto the edge of your piece. And then I lay it down and I do both sides. Like I say, and normally I'm working on a wood surface for my workbench versus on top of my other pieces of glass. I'm, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on it. Okay, the other thing that pretty much 99.9% .9 of the pieces, I have to do this is if you leave this little piece right here, this little tail, can you kind of see where I didn't get it matched up perfectly? If you leave that on there, your solder is going to show a weird little zibit. Solder is going to stick to the foil and not to the glass. So you're going to have a weird little spot there. So just simply, simply take your X-Acto knife and it just kind of a little triangle, um, just cut that little piece off. I just kind of run it at an angle and cut that off. Get rid of that weird little tail thing. You don't want that stuck to your glass somewhere. There we go. Okay, you're going to have a good solder line with no glue adhesive on it and none of those weird little divots. And like I said, it's odd if I don't have to trim every single piece that I do. Okay, so again, this one's semi-transparent. I can kind of see through it, so I'm going to go ahead and use my black. I always start in, and this is how I'm holding my foil. I have it through my finger 
uh, my index finger and my middle finger. And I use my ring finger to kind of guide and, and control and my little finger um, as well as a guide. And I tend to just start about a quarter of an inch from an edge. Okay, then I hold it down. I'm now with, holding it with my left hand, working the foil with my right hand. I use my ring finger to hold that down so I don't pull it off. And then I'm going to get a little bit of foil pulled out of my container. Going around there, I'm just going to lay it down and then I rub it with my ring finger and then I, I move. Now this hand, my left hand ring finger is holding that. My foil is in between my two fingers. Glass is straight so I use my little finger there to steady my hand. I put it down, give it a little gentle press. Now because glass is straight and foil is straight, I can go all the way to the tip here and apply that and then push it down. It's going to go on straight because you're dealing with physics there. Okay, I don't know if I can angle this a little bit. So I'm lining that up, looking down the line. Put my left hand ring finger there to hold it. Rotate my piece. Press it with my ring finger. And then I go all the way to the tip and trim it. Okay, so my ring finger on my left hand is what's holding the foil as I advance around. I'm pinching it with these two fingers as I rotate. It becomes my rotate point. And then I use my other fingers to kind of steady it as I go. Okay, same thing. Anywhere there's a point, I'm going to miter it. So what I did is I ran my finger and my thumb so that this side is pinched onto the glass. And then I'll go back and roll the other the top side down. And now it's just a matter of running my fingers and I'm using just a pinch. <laughs> I'm pinching it and running it around. Okay, here's another point. So I'm going to miter the bottom side, roll the top. Pinch it, roll, pinch, 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 and end it. Okay. And then get it good and tight on the glass. Another one real quick. Start about a quarter of an inch from the point. And I'm just sighting down, I'm just like literally sighting down the glass. Then on this side, if it's hard for you to sight down, just look on one side. And if it's even on that one side, it'll be even on the other also. It just, it takes practice. Practice, 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 practice. If I had to choose a tool to foil with, if I, if I absolutely had to use a tool versus my hands, um, a hand foiler would be my first choice, which the, it's just, it looks like a pen, a flat pencil and you feed the foil through there and it literally kind of lays the foil on and presses a little bit on the sides as you go through there. Um, I'm going to have to find mine. I haven't used it for years, but that would be my first choice. My second choice would probably be the table foiler that I showed you in the other video. Okay, I always do the edges first because I want that adhered to the glass. And then my final is doing both sides. You probably didn't notice, but on my last piece, I didn't have any places to trim, which is very odd. But it turned out right. On this piece, I always look 
and I am very particular. I can see that little nub right there. Right there. So I'm just going to trim it off. It may not seem like much, but that's what takes your glass doing the extra little steps. It'll take your, your glass one step higher than the next person's. Okay, so that gives you some um, ideas. I'm trying to find a piece real quick with an inside curve on it. Um, this one would be good. Okay, so I've got some inside curves. These are tough. This is where the Edco foil really shines. Venture is semi-okay. Um, if I knew that I had a really tight inside curve and there was no way that that foil was going to go on, what I would do is I would doctor it first. And doctoring it meaning I would put, and again this is clear so I'm using my black back, one way or the other, it'll probably, I'm adding some little pieces right in the middle of the curve. And it doesn't matter which way you go. If you go across it like this, or if you lay it on and put two layers on it both sides, it really doesn't matter because it's got that inside seam there. Okay, so I've put that on. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to foil it. This is an outside edge, so I don't need to foil the whole edge there. Okay, so I'm going to work my way around. Alright, here comes our inside curve. Go ahead and stick it in, rub it down. The next one, stick it and rub it. Stick it and rub it. Just make sure you're kind of getting it centered since this is see-through. Okay. Now after I ground these pieces, I just made sure they were very, very clean. I just use regular water in my tub when I'm taking my pattern pieces off and a, a clean towel, clean cotton towel. I don't use alcohol on them. I don't, um, I don't do anything special. But I also don't use grinder coolant. I used to. Um, if you're a believer in it, that's great. That's fine. There's no right or wrong. If you're not a believer in it, that's right. <laughs> no right or wrong. I just find that I really can't tell a difference with it saving my grinder bits any more length of time than not using it. And, and you can kind of see how I'm kind of rubbing that and stretching that. On my inside curves you can you can kind of rub and stretch that copper I normally do the back side first and then I'll come back and do the front side for some reason it splits less if I do do it that way I don't know why maybe it's just me okay so did it split of course not it didn't split so sometimes as you're doing a tight curve you'll get a little split in your foil down in the depths of that curve. And this is a way, the reason I put it on first is now I've got this foil covering over these two pieces here. If I would do it afterwards, that's okay, but it's more likely to lift up when you're running the hot soldering iron over it and pull away. So it's better if you kind of pre-plan on that. Again, I use, that's the reason I like this one versus there's one that's got just a round head on it. This one's a little more pointy, and I can use it more um, for the curves. Okay. I really don't like using my other glass to roll on, because I put quite a bit of pressure on it when I'm rolling. I want to make sure this foil is down tight. Okay, so then all you do is you take your X-Acto knife and trim that off to match the rest of the foil. And peel it away. Okay, so I've peeled it away. I've trimmed it on the one side so that it matches and I don't have that little crack in the foil. Do the other side. 
simply follow where the foil line is, peel those away, and then we've got it. No cracks. If there's a crack, solder's not going to stick to it and you're going to have a weird little bump there. So hopefully this has given you some tips and tricks and techniques for foiling. I'll come along sometime and do an in-depth um, demonstration on all the different hand foilers and table foilers and foil foilers and rollers and things like that, but i got to dig them all out of a box. So anyway, hope you learned something, and I've got about 250 more pieces to go.